Hello everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Lukman IAS. So today we are going to have the Hindu newspaper analysis dated 4th of December 2021. So let us quickly look into the topics that are important for the day. So we will look into these articles one by one today. The first article is about corridors of death. Okay. So this is a topic which is important under general studies paper 3 under environment and ecology uh, you know section so under environment and ecology this is important it says corridors of death okay so we will understand about you know how elephants are dying why elephants are dying and what are the steps that can be taken okay then the second topic is about cop 27 cop stands for conference of parties okay so cop 27 in egypt must focus on food systems okay so recently you know that like COP26 was held okay in Glasgow and COP27 is scheduled to be held in Egypt. The author is saying that like you know uh, the COP27 must focus on food systems okay so this is also important under environment and ecology section and after then we will talk about the third topic which says Shutterbug leads to a pretty find in Sikkim okay so this topic is important because like a you know new species has been recently discovered okay this is the species of butterfly it has been discovered recently so we will talk about the scientific name of this species we will understand where it was you know uh, uh, discovered okay so it is also important under environment and ecology section it was there in page number 12 of Delhi edition of the Hindu newspaper then we will look into another topic which is it says NBFC's bad loans may rise on RBI norms okay NBFC's stand for non-banking financial companies okay so it says like NBFC's bad loans may rise on RBI norms it simply you know warns that like if the RBI norms are you know being followed so it may lead to increase in the bad loans it may lead to increase in the non-performing assets okay so we will understand about you know uh, like of what RBI norms is this particular article talking about okay we will understand about that RBI norm. The next topic is about portion tracker data wraps okay we will understand about you know portion tracker like you know what is the status of nutrition of children in India okay so it is important that we need to understand you know that like India is a relatively young nation because majority of its population is young and at the same time they are you know young adults so at this point of time you know if we talk about the you know new generation the children who are under five years so are they you know uh, healthy built do they have healthy built okay I mean like are they healthy do they have you know good health status and all right it is under economy section then next topic we will talk about the portion tracker data wrap so we have talk, uh, we, we have discussed then we will look into mg narega okay so mg narega means mahatma gandhi national rural employment uh, generation act or guarantee act okay so this mg narega seeks 25000 crore more okay so it is important under indian economy section and at last we are going to talk about a topic that says longest migration route of lesser florican from Rajasthan tract okay this is again you know important under environment and ecology section under this like we are going to understand about uh, you know a migratory bird we will understand what is its you know IUCN status and we will understand how long does it you know migrate okay so this is important under environment and ecology so we will understand about a particular species that was in news okay then we will solve up uh, you know prelims mcq okay with this now let us quickly move to the first topic for the day okay this topic says corridors of death okay it says corridors of death okay so it says elephants are victims of train collisions and electric fences in rising man animal conflict okay so when we talk about elephants you know elephants are nomadic uh, nomadic animal it means like you know they they need a proper route 
so that like they can keep on moving okay so the more they move you know the more healthier they stay okay elephant is a heavy animal so it needs proper corridors to move but the thing is with uh, with overpopulation of human being okay animals are finding it difficult to survive on this planet earth and same can be you know said in case of india as well in india like you know because of like human animal conflict like hum humans have taken over the you know spaces that were earlier or that were hitherto you know occupied by the animals okay so earlier like animals like uh, elephant they used to have their proper space they they used to have proper habitat to settle down but now with the you know encroachment in their areas the animals are finding it difficult to move through okay so recently it was reported that like in the last 10 years more than 7 uh, like more than 1160 elephants have died okay and more than 741 elephants have died because of electrocution electrocution means when an animal die because of electric shock okay so like the uh, we need to you know uh, like resolve such uh, such situations so that animals can also find it easy to live on this planet earth or to live you know or to migrate through the elephant corridors okay so now elephants one of the major cause is electrocution electrocution means death of uh, like you know death of elephants with electric shock because of electric lines okay this is electrocution is one of the major cause of death of elephants second is train hits when train hit elephants then then elephants die okay so these are the two major causes and the author has suggested the measures that can be taken to address this particular scenario okay so it says installing hanging solar powered fences as has been planned in tamil nadu and kerala and planting centro uh, centronella and lemon grass as done in golaghat district assam to deter elephants are some of the uh, some of the large scale options okay now they are saying like we can install hanging solar powered fences okay hanging solar powered fences means these fences will be hanging so that like elephants can see that like you know there is no route to pass through it okay so that like they deter from passing through it deter means they stop themselves so that they feel difficult like you know we should not go there like if we go there like we we may face difficulty so one option is installing hanging solar powered fences and second option is like planting centrola and lemongrass okay we can uh, plant lemongrass and centrola something like uh, this so this solution was adopted in the state of assam in the golaghat district okay this is a district in assam so they have adopted this particular technique over there so this is the thing apart from this okay the authority should ensure that there are no illegal electric fences or barbed wire fences which instead can be replaced with solar powered uh, ones okay so like you know we should replace the electrical fences okay with solar powered fences okay this is one of the solution that was given the critical role elephants play in biodiversity con conservation must be highlighted especially those living in areas close to the elephant corridors okay so this is important i mean like it is important that you read about you know the human elephant conflict as a you know different case and at at the same time you should think about like what can be the different ways to resolve this particular human animal conflict or human elephant conflict okay so with this now we will move to the next topic for the day this article is important like we have had you know recently we have had multiple discussions related to cop 26 that was in news now we will focus on cop 27 which is scheduled to be held you know recently 
so we will understand about cop 27 so it is going to be held in egypt this cop 26 was held in glasgow okay so cop 27 in egypt must focus on food systems okay it says like now it is the time that we should focus on food systems so that food security can be i mean uh, can be addressed the issues related to food security can be addressed okay so the context the united nations climate change conference cop 26 held in glasgow between october 31 and november 12 with a huge gathering generating headlines criticism and some commitments government did not commit to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and put forth a record shattering 356 million dollar in new support from contributing national regional government to protect the most vulnerable okay so now here the author is focusing on climate crisis and hunger climate crisis means the global temperature is, is increasing okay global temperature is increasing with the increase of greenhouse gases in the environment okay so it is the time that all the countries should come together to discuss about the reasons for increase in greenhouse gases the ways to reduce or minimize the greenhouse gases okay so for, for this purpose you know the greenhouse gases must be reduced to an extent so that like you know global temperature rise can be addressed so that like it can be reduced to significant level and at the same time analysis by the united nations world food program shows that two percent rise in average global temperature from pre-industrial levels will see a staggering 189 million additional people in the grip of hunger okay so when i mean like you know the world sees more than two percent rise in global climate uh, you know temperature um, uh, as compared to the pre-industrial level then more people will be pushed towards you know facing hunger crisis okay so global climate uh, you know temperature rise is linked to hunger crisis so that's why it is important that like you know now the world should look forward to addressing the hunger crisis and you know like you know like the recently the united nations has adopted okay uh, the target okay the target it has adopted a target that we should reduce hunger okay hunger is a main concern of united nations some of the program okay so we should reduce hunger so with this ob objective the author has you know the author has suggested that like we should adopt the adaptation finance okay we should adopt a mechanism of adaptation finance the uh, recently many countries have you know uh, uh, have taken pledges that like we will make our country carbon neutral okay by the year of 2050 means like you know they have adopted the target of 2050 to go for net zero emission but india has adopted this particular target for the year of 2070 so this is the thing now here we need to understand that like you know the author has uh, you know given us the, uh, you know few points that can be uh, that can be taken to address this uh, scenario there are a few key areas or measures we should focus on first creating resilient livelihoods and food security solutions by protecting and improving the livelihood of vulnerable communities second the author says that the adaptation of climate resilient food crops such as millets for nutritional security must be adopted and the third solution that the author suggests is enabling women's control and ownership of protection uh, pr uh, production processes and assets and increased value addition in local solutions means like you know women should be uh, should be given control on ownership of production processes okay and assets and increased value addition local solutions means like women should also be considered as a major stakeholder when it comes to ownership of assets right then the fourth suggestion that the author has given is promoting a resilient agriculture sector by creating sustainable opportunities access to finance and innovation for 
small holder farmers with climate information and preparedness and fifth building capacity and knowledge of civil society and governments for vulnerability analysis to increase food security by addressing the link between food security and climate risk i have read all these points for you so that you remember like you know you can write these points in way forward or in solutions when you are you know talking about i mean climate related issues or when when you are talking about the food security related issues with this like you know we will understand little more on this particular article right so yes means like food security is one of the most fundamental and the basic human need of a basic need of a human then having a, st a stable climate is the basic need for the all the creatures that are there in the uh, uh, like in the globe or that are there on earth right if we have a supporting or like if we have a good atmosphere good environment then everybody will be you know will be able to breathe i mean like you know healthy oxygen and all so if the you know climate related issue is not addressed then the world at large may face you know severe crisis okay so this is the thing uh, fixing broken food systems okay so now we need to you know fix the broken food systems what are broken food systems like you know now what has happened with the change in the climate pattern many people are, i mean like you know at large from different societies they have moved to a you know different kind of uh, food production systems they started using fertilizers lot of things so like anyhow you know most of the people who are feeding on these food they are being intoxicated by by you know the chemical ingredients of these fertilizers here the author is focusing on the sustainable development goal the united nations okay the united nations has adopted the sustainable development goal and you know food security or you know uh, reducing the hunger to zero level was one of the main targets okay so we are on the cusp of transformation to make the world free of hunger by the year of 2030 and deliver promises for sustainable development goals sdgs with a strong cooperation and partnership between governments citizens civil society organizations and the private sector this requires reimagining the food systems towards balancing growth and sustainability migrating climate change ensuring healthy safe um, quality and affordable food with in, with investment from government and the private sector okay in supporting the farmers while maintaining biodiversity improving resilience and offering attractive income and work environment to a small a small holders and youth okay so this is a very generalistic article but like you know it focuses on one important key aspect which is food security for the world okay food security is a very important issue and that has to be addressed at all cost okay so with this now let us move to the next topic okay this article fo uh, focuses on a species okay this is a butterfly species that was recently discovered okay name of this butterfly species
clicking photographs okay so later on you know entomologist based at the national center for biological sciences bengaluru okay they identified the uh, the uh, uh, identified the uploaded picture okay so butterflies of india website okay that they maintained so this is the thing the scientific name i have already told about it okay so this particular species you know the new species of butterfly now named as chocolate bordered flitter okay so it is common name is chocolate border bordered uh, flitter also carries the scientific name zoographetus okay zoographetus zonguensis okay zoographetus zonguensis after zongo in north sikkim and place where it was discovered its closest relatives are zoographetus pung, uh, you know pungi in guangdong means like you know so this particular species has some closest you know subspecies also or like you know closest species that can be connected with you know southern china okay southeastern china close to hong kong so this is the thing okay you just need to remember the name of this particular species and the place where it was discovered it was discovered in sikkim okay it was discovered by the photo or photographs clicked by sonam wongchuk okay so with this now let us move to the next topic this topic was in news it is a very interesting topic why because this is related to gs paper 3 the i mean uh, indian economy section so it says nbfc's bad loans may rise on rbi norms nbfc stands for non banking financial companies okay so what is the context there was a you know clarification by the reserve bank of india okay the recent clarification by the reserve bank of india on non performing advances okay generally like we know it as a non performing assets okay non performing assets are those assets that are loans or advances given by a bank to its customers so that like you know the banks can receive some returns on it uh, you know in the nature of interest rate but like when banks are extending those loans or advances to the customers many of those customers are not repaying the installments they are not repaying the you know principal amount as well so these assets of the banks are not performing so that's why we know it as non performing assets here they have mentioned it as non performing advances so they are similar okay non performing assets or non performing advan uh, advances they are in short known as npas okay so it says the recent clarification by the reserve bank of india on non performing advances may increase non banking financial companies bad loans by a third okay so already the non banking financial companies have a huge they have a huge this thing i mean like you know non performing assets and the recent clarification that was made by the reserve bank of india it may lead to increase in the non performing asset by one third more let's consider now the status of the non performing asset is like you know 2 by 3 of x then it will lead to increase of 1 by 3 of x more okay so this will be the increase that we can see in the uh, in non performing assets so last month the reserve bank of india had provided clarification on income recognition asset classification and provisioning okay so income recognition asset clarif uh, asset classification and provisioning norms okay these are the norms uh, you know that were Uh, that were made by the reserve bank of india for different banks to follow okay different banks nbfcs and all india financial institutions the rbi's clarification on non performing advances accounting is likely to increase nps by around 1/3 for non banking financial companies okay it was said by india ratings and research okay a report so like the, uh, a recent year report was released by india ratings and research okay so this organization has said in a report this particular thing 
so you need to understand what are non performing assets this is a you know fundamental topic under uh, indian economy and then you need to understand about like what is income recognition asset classification and provisioning norms okay read about this particular norm of rbi do some more research okay so that like if a question comes on this particular topic income recognition asset classification and provisioning norms then you will be able to answer this topic easily okay so with this now let us move to the next topic for the day it says it says portion tracker data under wraps okay portion tracker means the nutrition indicators okay means like you know when we are tracking the nutrition status of children okay so that is known as portion tracker portion is the hindi word for nutrition okay so nutrition indicators recorded in real time are not in public domain okay so the author highlights that like you know the real time recording of nutrition status is not available in the public domain it should be made available in the public domain so that like public at large gets to know about it and the policy makers may take you know proper decisions and they can frame such policies that can actually lead to the uh, lead to the addressing the issues of malnutrition addressing the issues of hunger stunting wasting among children okay or underweight among children okay so this is the thing the ministry of women and child development has spent over 1000 crore on its portion on nutrition tracker which records real time data on malnourished and severe acute malnourished children in each anganwadi but four years since its launch the government is yet to make the data public this is a very important information that the ministry of women and child development they have spent more than 1000 crore rupees on this particular you know initiative like portion on nutrition tracker okay that tracks the status of you know uh, like uh, malnutrition among children and this is done through anganwadis okay anganwadis are those places where you know food i mean like food are distributed to the young children okay so these are places that are there in almost every village in india okay or every locality in india so that like you know the uh, the malnutrition can be addressed but you know it's been 4 years since the launch of this particular initiative that the government of india did not release the you know portion status or nutrition status of children in the public domain but recently there was a report by the you know national family health survey five data and that data has also missed okay uh, that data has also missed uh, uh, you know no, details about the uh, i mean this nutrition status of children and it is you know like through different records it was found that you know majority of indian children in various states okay majority of them have the issues of malnutrition and these are related to you know like uh, like not proper growth and like you know scientifically we term them as the stunted stunted means are children like who uh, whose height is not as per his age wasted it means a child has you know achieved good height but like he does not have proper uh, body weight or like you know the body body weight is not as per the uh, the height of the children then underweight underweight means a children who has very less weight as compared to i mean like his bodily structure and all so these are the things that are missing the government has spent 1053 crore on portion tracker or information communication technology real time monitoring as on march 31 2021 the ministry of women and child development told um, told the parliamentary standing committee on education and women children and youth and sports okay so they have said this thing but yet the data was not you know made in the public domain so so the portion tracker gives the ministry daily data from 12.3 lakh anganwadi centers with 9.8 lakh beneficiaries okay so this is the thing so like this gives a you know picture to the people that like you know uh, such important data are not being released by the ministries it is important that they should be made publicly available so that like you know 
the policy makers can take proper decisions for improving the health status of these children okay so with this now let us move to the next topic it says mg narega okay mg narega seeks 25000 crore more okay so the total supplementary demands for 2021 to 22 amounts to 3.73 lakh crore parliament told okay so we need to understand what does mg narega stands for mg narega stands for mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act okay so this is a government scheme under which people are given guaranteed employment of 100 days in a year okay so people who are willing to do manual work they are given guaranteed you know employment for 100 days in rural areas as well as in urban areas so this scheme was launched for the purpose of generating employment and at the same time for the purpose of creating durable assets okay so this is the thing now here it says that cash is trapped okay as many as 27 states and union territories have utilized more than 100% of fund year mark for mg narega in financial year to, uh, 2020 till december 3 okay so this is the thing and the chart shows the percentage of allocated funds un under mg narega for financial year 2020 utilized by states okay so here you can see the map of india some states have been you know uh, marked using dark color other states have been marked using red color okay so like there is one state over here you know th this particular state which is goa okay goa is marked with yellow color it says percentage of people okay so uh, so here less than 80 uh, 80% mg, uh, percentage of funds used okay less than 80% of fund was used in goa and if we talk about you know the red colored states like uttar pradesh odisha telangana okay so these are the states you know where more than 80 to 90% of fund has been utilized okay 80 to 90 or 90 to 100% funds are utilized okay like that so there is you know some light red and dark red over here so odisha 95.45% of fund has been utilized telangana 82.44% fund has been utilized and at the same time you know there are some northeastern states like assam uh, okay there also you know more than uh, 90% of the fund has been utilized uttar pradesh i mean like 96.26% fund utilized and those states that are shown in dark red color in these states you know they have utilized more funds that more than the funds that were allocated so like you know the balance is in negative territory now so that's why you know the mg narega seeks more than 25000 crore okay for uh, i mean like you know for making this particular uh, scheme of the government to work again so that durable assets can be created and so that like you know people can be given uh, job security okay or employment guarantee so we will talk about another article today this article is also important why this is important because like this article focuses on a species okay on a species that was in news okay this species was in news we will understand about this it says that the longest migration route of lesser florican from rajasthan tract okay so lesser florican is a species of bird okay here you can see this is the image of lesser florican it may not be visible clearly you know to people like who are watching it online okay but like we will share the pdf of this uh, discussion so using that pdf you will be able to you know read and uh, see the pictures that are available here okay so i mean the core focus over here is on this particular species it is lesser Flo florican okay it was sighted means it was seen in ajmer district of rajasthan okay so i mean other things are also mentioned here but like our primary concern here is to understand about this species what is the scientific name of this species what is the iucn status of this species because like many a times upsc directly asks 
the IUCN status of various species that were in use. Okay. So here, the lesser florican. Okay, it is a critically endangered species. Okay, it is a critically endangered species under the International Union for Conservation of Nature Red List of threatened species. Okay, so IUCN really, uh, has a red list. Okay, this particular list, you know, uh, list the you know different species around the world they may be animal species plant species or you know species of birds and all and these species are categorized under different level of threats based on the you know threats that they are facing so this species is you know categorized under critically endangered species okay so this is the thing the lesser uh, lesser florican taxonomically classified as cypheotides indicus okay this is the scientific name of lesser florican okay so i have you know uh, like put a box around it this is cypheotides indicus and it is a small and slender bird species belonging to the bustard group and it is found in tall grasslands for which dehradun based wildlife institute of india has launched a recovery program okay so wildlife institute of india has launched a recovery program for this particular species and it was recently cited okay it was recently seen in ajmer district in rajasthan that is not very important this information is imp not important for you the most important information is the iucn status of this species it is a critically endangered species under the iucn red list of threatened species okay you must be knowing that IUCN has a red list. It, it you know, categorizes different species under seven different categories. Out of those uh, categories, four categories are most important. Vulnerable, okay, endangered, critically endangered and extinct, okay, or threatened, okay. So these are, you know, different kind of, you know, threat categories for these birds or, or animal species that are in news. So with this, we will move to the last topic for the day, which is prelims practice question. Okay. So we will take this question for the day. We will understand, you know, the topic from where this question came. So it says, which among the following steps is most likely to be taken at the time of economic recession? Okay. So when economic recession happens, so which of this step is likely, likely to be taken by the government? Okay. Which step can be taken? okay first says cut in tax rates accompanied by in uh, increase in interest rate okay so see the government or the rbi can cut the tax rate they can uh, cut the tax rate but like they will not uh, you know they will not increase the interest rate if tax rate is cut interest rate is increased so people will find it difficult to borrow money from the banking channel so it will not address the issue of economic recession so the option a is incorrect okay if we talk about second option it says increase in expenditure on public projects okay when the government increases expenditure on public projects so it leads to more employment generation many people find new jobs in in public projects this is like a beneficial trend and these public projects will in turn you know lead to the uh, lead to you know more asset creation for the economy and it will lead to boosting the economic you know demand okay so this is one of the thing that can be taken by the government but we will still look for other options okay it says increase in tax rates accompanied by reduction in interest rate this is just opposite of first one okay so it is also not likely because when the tax rates are increased so people when they are doing business you know they will have to pay huge amount to the government and like you know reduction like if we talk about if interest rate is reduced so like you know money will come easily from the i mean money will come easily from the i mean uh, banking sector so tax rate like you know if they increase the tax rate it will be difficult i mean like it will be easy for the government government will find it easy but like you know it will be difficult for people uh, this thing i mean reduction of interest rate is a uh, you know is a thing that can be addressed fourth thing or uh, fourth you know a d option it says reduction of expenditure on public projects okay this is just opposite of you know b option reduction of expenditure on public project okay so, so government uh, if they reduce the expenditure on public projects it's not going to you know uh, 
uh, be beneficial for the economy. So what do you think? Which option is the right? B or C? Option B, sir. Yeah. Option B is one of the right statement. Okay. So this is the right statement. Because option B. My state government is facing same problems. Okay. All right. That's good. <laughs> Already CAG has given a severe report on JP, sir. You are expending more than your capability of money income. Right. Revenue income. Okay, so with this, thank you so much everyone for attending today's session. I hope you have a great day ahead. Thank you. What is the meaning of a consider? What is the meaning of consider? Corridor. 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 Okay, so someone has typed, uh, you know, online, so I will uh, address that question. So they have asked, what do we mean by corridor? Corridor means, you know, up way to pass I mean let's consider you know uh, let's consider there is a tiger reserve or elephant century okay for example we uh, just a minute okay so I will address this question let's consider we have a elephant century okay this is a big elephant century or tiger reserve this is a place where you know elephants reside or tiger resides or, or any species for that matter reside. And let's consider there is another you know similar uh, elephant sanctuary, elephant sanctuary 2. This is elephant sanctuary 1, okay, elephant sanctuary 2. But how does elephant move from one sanctuary to another sanctuary? Means like one place to another place. They will move through a passage way. A, a way you know that gives uh, that gives them you know road to pass through that is known as a corridor okay it is known as a corridor okay so normally like you know many forests may be connected through small or narrow passage narrow corridors but what happens in many a cases you know human being have their roads you know uh, passing through these corridors let's uh, you know human beings have built many roads that passes through these corridors so this can be one of the motor way so you know elephants are coming from here but people are moving you know through roads over here so there can be collision okay there can be i mean collision between elephant and the buses and all so it may lead to the death of elephants so the, so that's that's why you know we should be having you know these corridors free of you know public transport system it should be free of uh, like buses it should be free of trains but like you know that is not a feasible option people have created this thing so what we are trying to do we are trying to safeguard these animals by you know having some mechanism over there so that if in case you know uh, an elephant comes the train or bus can be stopped or like you know during the passage of train you know we can create some kind of fencing mechanism over here fencing means you know some kind of barrier so that although if ele elephants are coming over here they will stop for some time till the train passes and they will go through it but this thing has not been yet addressed okay this is what we mean by corridor Col corridor means a passage way a road road means not in conventional terms this is a way through which you know an animal can freely pass from one sanctuary or tiger reserve to another sanctuary or tiger reserve okay so i hope uh, a person who has asked this question he has got answer to the uh, to this particular thing thank you so much everyone for joining this session today i hope you have a great day ahead thank you